Welcome back to another episode of the Know Your Power podcast. I am your host, Julia Renee. And Kendall Graboff. And today, guys, we are going to be addressing something that you've probably been wondering for a while uh, and doing a little Q&A. So, yeah. yeah. Um, basically, we're going to be just briefly talking about Gabby leaving the podcast. Uh, Kendall, take it away. <laughs> I want to start with the obvious. We are very much so still friends with her. We still love her. Mm -hmm. Um, She had moved away from where we live about a two or three hour drive from us. So it's just, we've been trying to make it work and it just kind of hasn't. And I feel like we all have reasons and like, it's just, I mean, filming the pod is hard in general. We live 10 minutes from each other and we're both just so busy getting here is, is very hard. And, um, I think Gabby just realized it was like a commitment that she really couldn't like do week by week anymore. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's bad blood and hopefully we can have her as a guest here and there, but she's just not going to be a co-host with us anymore. Yeah. So it's just going to be me and Kendall, but moving forward, I mean, we're going to be able to have more guests on the podcast. So this is going to range from people of all industries i would say mainly like mindset fitness stuff like that but now we have more room on the bed and we can have a little bit more guests so be ready for that i'm sure possibly by the time you've listened to this one you've already listened to one of our first guests which was live wickedly so if you haven't go back and listen to that podcast insightful highly recommend 100 percent. she was my mindset coach for two years and just having her on the podcast was so incredible but We're going to be having some really awesome, awesome guests that are going to provide you with so much insight and just help you step into your power even more. But as of today, yes, Gabby's leaving the podcast and it's sad. We're going to miss her. But obviously we still can go to Houston, like visit her, you know, whenever we want to. But yeah. So Kendall, let's get on to some Q&A questions. These are questions that you guys wanted to know. So we're going to answer them for you. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the first few are really simple. Um, First one being, how long have we been lifting? I feel like that's a question we all get all the time. Yeah. Um, Personally, I actually got my first gym membership when I was like 10 or 11 years old. We had to lie about my age. I know, crazy. Um, But I was a gymnast and I quit gymnastics and I was so used to training for four or five hours a day and Mm -hmm. doing like an hour of conditioning a day that I was like, oh no, like now I don't have that. And I, I missed that structure. So I started going to the gym and I wasn't weightlifting at 11 or 12 years old. Um, but I was going and I was doing like calisthenics and the things I was doing in gymnastics basically. Mm. Um, and then I started picking up weights, I think around freshman year because the sports I was doing, like our coaches were telling us that like the benefits of weight training. And I was like, okay. So I started wrongfully training legs all the time and like not knowing how to hit upper body not knowing about rest I remember back when I was 14 I would do an hour of Stairmaster a day and then go home and eat like so much pasta and pizza that like it did nothing yeah like it just kind of averaged out I didn't gain weight I didn't lose weight I was just kind of staying the same every day um and then that evolved to like around 15 I think educating myself and starting to take lifting seriously so I would say I've been seriously lifting How many years is that? (laughs) Like six years. Been been competing for four. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But I've been in the gym, I feel like, for 11 years. That's freaking crazy. Kendall's, I was like, you were literally like born. I was literally birthed in the gym. Birthed in the gym, man. I swear. So young. And I'm always jealous of the people that start so young, especially like in bodybuilding. I'm like, ah. Like there's some of these Brazilian girls that literally started at like 15 like, like, even though I'm one of those people, I still wish I had taken it more seriously. Yeah, but they then. like started at 15 knowing like I'm going to be a bodybuilder. Like if, yeah. if I would have known that, that would be fucking huge right now. I feel like that it does have negatives too of like leaning to burn out sooner and stuff like that. But 100%. Yeah. How long so, have you been lifting? For me, it's always like uh, it's such a blur because I'm not like I've been lifting for this long. But for me, I started I was always athletic. You guys know that did a bunch of different sports, but the sport that actually stuck was wrestling. So I did that from 15 to 18. I did a lot of weightlifting there, a lot of wrestling and a lot of like cross country, but cross country. Yeah. Because of, um, I could never, yeah. I, at a point guys, I was able to run a six minute mile. (laughs) Isn't that fast? That's fast, right? That's pretty fast. I think that's my fastest of all time. And it's when I was a gymnast. Yeah. Just cause like my conditioning was crazy. Yeah. And I was like, 
fuck. Like, just imagine running, like, a four-minute mile. That's literally a minute around that entire... F- oh, hell no. <laughs> but the reason that we did that was so that we can keep our conditioning up so that we can last through the matches. So I was lifting from 15 to 18, and then I stopped. And I was pretty, like, muscular. Like, people thought I was really muscular in high school, and now I'm like, no, I wasn't. And then from 18 till I would say... From 18 till I was 19, I was in beauty school. Then I went to, so from, I didn't do anything from that period of time, like whatsoever. I think I started lifting again when I was 21. Mm-hmm. 20 or, it was either 20 or 21. I'm 25 now. So do that math. I'm not going to do that math. But several years for both of us. Yes. Yeah, it took years. us a while to get the muscle we have. Yeah. When I was lifting for wrestling, I would just listen to what they were doing. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was like getting muscle. And then mm-hmm. from, I say 20 to like 25, that's when I was, just, it was actually like intentional. And I was like, okay, I need to learn some stuff. But yeah, yeah. that's what nice. I did. The next question, I actually am really interested in your tips, if you have any, is advice on wearing makeup in the gym and not breaking out from that. Mm. Do you have any tips? It's hard because I'm not someone that naturally breaks out or has bad skin. I think that if you are, it's a lot harder. It's definitely a lot harder. So maybe I can give tips. I'm currently on a medication for acne, but before I was to manage it, because I would often go from work to the gym, which I think most people have to do that. And sometimes you don't have time to like shower in between or take your makeup off because obviously like working out with no makeup on is probably the best choice if you're acne prone. Mm -hmm. Um, But sometimes, you know, it's a confidence thing or sometimes it's a, I don't have time to take it off thing. Um, I would keep makeup wipes in my car though. So immediately after my workout, I would take my makeup off because I think if you let that sweat like sit in your pores with the makeup on top of it, like that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah. That's my only tip on that. Also, I feel like, like for me, I just do, I don't even like have, it sucks because I, I'm just like, I don't even have to worry about this, <laughs> but there are times where like, it's, it is kind of annoying, but I think that instead of wearing like a thick makeup, wearing something that's like a BB cream. Mm-hmm. And then I found this new product. Oh, I, f- I can't remember the brand. What is it though? But it's basically... It's just like a, it's like shiny and it's like a, it's like a moisturizer, but a highlighter at the same oh, time. Pretty. And you put it all over your face and it just adds like an extra glow. So if you mix that in, they have them in compl- all different brands. Like, I you know, NYX has a different yeah. kind. It's like that. And you mix that in with your BB cream or just like very light foundation. Putting that on to go to the gym instead is better. Or if you're like, have your full face of makeup on, you're leaving work or something, then you're going to the gym. You can just makeup remover wipe that yeah. thick layer of foundation and then maybe put on just the little bb cream yeah if you feel just like, like you concealer need to if you feel like you need it i've definitely been in a place where i'm breaking out so bad that i'm like i can't go to the gym like it, it just becomes debilitating if you do deal with really bad acne and you feel like that's all people are ever looking at when they're looking at you um so yeah i remember when my skin was at its worst i was like well i just can't even work out and then <laughs> I ain't even going to the gym at all. I like took literally a week off because I was like embarrassed that like even through the makeup you would see it. And I think just like, I don't know, also a reminder that like nobody in the gym is paying attention to that at all. So. And also I would really just like, how was your skincare routine? Because you mm-hmm. can get away with wearing makeup to the gym and be okay. Like how thorough is your makeup routine? Like for me, it's like a it's a process. Like I go and take my makeup off first and that's not even enough. Then I go in and I use like this little tool to massage my face with my face wash after that. Then I do like a toner because like no matter how many times you do that, each time you still get dirt off. Yeah. You're like, Oh wow. This is all like engraved in my skin. (laughs) I do three different things to get makeup off of my face and I wear a lot. And so just yeah. Just, just think about those just steps. take care of your think skin. Think about those steps that you do. <laughs> Next one's an easy one. What's your favorite cheat meal or free meal? Burgers and fries. Water burger. That's so the opposite of me. I couldn't tell you the last time I had a hamburger. Like probably like over 10 years Is ago. Is like poke? Yeah, of course. Oh. Well, sushi would be my top. If I'm going like dirtier cheat meal, like a full cheat meal, pizza. Big pizza guy. I'm a big, I'm a big (laughs) pizza guy. I can't have real pizza anymore because my gluten allergy, but like gluten-free pizza is still pizza. Yeah. Still. Do you have it with ranch? I sometimes. 
It's not like that's not my preferred. It has but like to, I will. Pizza has to be eaten with ranch. Oh, you're one of those. I am. I, I used to my not be. Is one of those. I used to not be. I I would see people in high school and they would eat like the crap pizza that like the mm-hmm. high schools have. Still great pizza. <laughs> yeah, and they would dip it in ranch. And be like y'all are disgusting. Like that's I, so. Gross I would do now. my crust and ranch. Yeah, because it's literally like I a get bread. extra like of the pizza sauce to dip it in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's normal. <laughs> God, I, think I ranch, love food. Ranch is very normal, but n- weird at the same time. Are you a normal fry person or a sweet potato fry person? Normal fry. I only will have sweet potatoes if I also have regular potatoes. That's fair. <laughs> because I don't like to get the sweet potato fries and then wish I had regular yeah. fries. Get so both. What, Why not? Yeah, it's your I'll cheat meal. Live it up. <laughs> yeah, I make them get him, And then I just have a s- little snack and then I eat mine. Um, my next one also pertaining to food is how to combat having little or no appetite. So I know there's a lot of men and women out there that want to bulk up or gain muscle or whatever. Um, but they just physically feel like sick to their stomach trying to eat. Do you have any, any tips for that? To how to eat more when you feel like you can't eat more. My go-to is always high calorie smoothies or shakes. Yeah. That was going to be my, yeah. Anything that's liquid just goes down a lot easier. Like imagine eating 500 calories of whole foods versus 500 calories of liquids. Like we all have at least like one, like fun drink a day. We have like water. We'll have like our coffee, like that, getting that down is so much easier. That's why we're more prone to have like a coffee for breakfast Mm -hmm. rather than actual food because it's just easier this morning. Yeah. We have something in our stomach that we don't have to like chew. So, the thing that I give my clients that can't eat very much, some of them because it's, they have a surgery where they literally can't eat so much, um, it's like a protein shake. You do one scoop of protein powder. You can do like whatever unsweetened milk that you have because like milk can have tons of calories depending on what kind you get. So you can mm-hmm. have like the almond milk, soy milk, cashew, whatever is your preference. And it's usually about 25 calories for a cup. So you mix it in with that. Adding berries adds more carbs and more calories. A tablespoon of peanut butter adds more fats. And I love it when people think pro- there's like protein. Like pe- peanut butter is protein. I'm like, peanut butter is not you know, really protein, um, bro. <laughs> I think her name's like Olivia Ponton, Pontoon. She's a big TikTok girl. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a model. So she's like naturally very slim. But she was like, my toxic trait is that before the gym, I'm like, I need protein. And I eat like half a tub of peanut butter. And it's like. That's fully fats. Nope. There's like maybe one gram of protein. Literally. In there's like 18 grams of fat for a serving and like one gram of protein. Yeah. Which is like wild. It's like, <laughs> no. So it's like a protein, scoop of protein powder, tablespoon of peanut butter, almond milk, whatever it might be, some berries. If you want to add even more carbs, I always add oats to it. So you can do like half a cup, whatever you want. And it adds some carbs to it. So now you have protein, carbs, and fats all in your meal. And you just made like a smoothie that could be super low calorie into something that's high calorie. And it's way easier for you to digest. Yes. And you can eat like these people. I love these. These people are so lucky because they can eat all the higher calorie foods and get away with it, Mm -hmm. which is, which is awesome because they need to get those calories in. Yeah. I feel like typically people with a really fast metabolism have a lower appetite because like it's hard it's hard that even though your stomach is processing all of this really quickly, it's hard to eat like every hour, every two hours. I know a lot of people that are that way or they won't gain weight or they'll in fact like lose weight if they're not actively pushing food. Mm -hmm. It can be really hard. We all know that guy from high school that literally like was so skinny and he had abs and everyone's like, oh my God, he has abs. Mm -hmm. And you're like, of course he has abs. He has the metabolism of a child. I wish. I was like, bro, it's not fair. (laughs) My next question is favorite leg exercises for building quads. So my favorite quad. quad my quadrilaterals. Ex- yes. Okay. That's not really the word for it. <laughs> squats. Doing some squats. Normal, like back squat. Yes. Yes. And I just love leg extensions, man. Those are my... So underrated. Those are my favorite. And you can do so much with the leg extension machine, like holds and like pause reps and drop sets. There's so many things that you can do to challenge yourself on that one machine. Mm -hmm. And it's literally, it's my favorite. Like my legs blow up so fast from doing leg extensions. So those two are my favorite. So if I'm going to pick my favorite compound movement, obviously it's like a squat Mm -hmm. and I can do this. If I get bored with doing a squat on a barbell, then I'll do it with a machine Mm -hmm. 
I I'd say pendulum is my favorite as far as squats squat. because I think I am naturally more hamstring glute dominant. Mm. So when I do back squats, those take over more. So I either do heel elevated back squats or pendulum or like the two that help me target quads. I love that. So the pendulum is the one, the, the like, death one that like swings. Swing. It literally like swings <laughs> in like a half so circle. Hard. I feel so weak every time Humbling. I do that. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start adding that to my quad days because I forgot about that. That's like my favorite. In that gym. one in the, the hip press. I never knew what a hip press was until recently, but that's, it's similar movement pattern to the pendulum, but you're sitting. So it's like a leg press version of the of the little of the pendulum. Let's call it like a little crescent. Yeah. It moves in like a crescent. But I feel like that like pathway is just really quad mm-hmm. focused. At for least some for reason me. for me, I get more hammy and glute with that. I think it's where you stand. I also learned um You're doing right. everything very close together, feet and knees, a lot more like outer quad for me. Yeah. And like just like you, like you just said, a general kind of guideline is if your feet are a little bit closer and your toes are, for, are more forward, it is definitely going to be a lot more quad focused. Mm-hmm. However, all of our bodies are different. You never know what yeah. the fuck's going to happen. Yeah. And if you have your feet wider, toes pointed out, generally you're going to hit more hamstrings and glutes. So you can do these squats, these scoots, and just change your foot positioning. It can actually change a lot for you. Nice. Nailed it. <laughs> I honestly only have one more question and this one can be long or short depending on how, how in depth we go. Um, people are just curious of like what we fully do for a living. Like <laughs> I feel like me and you both have like 25 different avenues of, of revenue and just things we do as yeah. passion projects, not even for income. So like it might take think a we don't work. Yeah. <laughs> people legit think we don't work. Because Granted. sometimes we'll be in bed at like 2 PM on a Tuesday but that doesn't mean we're not like accomplishing a ton of yeah, other shit like until that, one on in the laptop. morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't, I've had so many people that are like, oh, you just lay in bed all day, right? And I'm like, if I'm ever like posting a story that I'm in bed or like if I'm like traveling during the week, like it is work related. Mm-hmm. I definitely have my laptop on me or I'm working on my phone. Like I don't think there's ever a time where I just sit there and I'm like, I'm just gonna watch TV right now. Like yeah. during the day, never. Yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah. it's really funny too, because like, that is the, the benefit of what we do. Cause we work from home. We can make our own schedules is that our phone can be enough for work. Our mm-hmm. laptops can be enough for work and we don't have to go to a place so we can go to do it from a coffee shop. We can do it anywhere. And I think that, yeah, people are like, if you're not driving to some place <laughs> yeah. and clocking in, you're not working, but, um, so what's everything you do? Okay, so everything that I do <laughs> might take so a while to get through the number list. Number one, I have a podcast. Yes. Number two, I have we have the podcast uh, YouTube channel. Three, I have my own personal YouTube channel. I have a TikTok. These don't seem like jobs, but they're jobs because we have they to are, create yeah. content for all of them. So let's just that's already right there filming the four blanket, different videos in one week. The so. blanket is wrapping all of these things, and then. Uh, I have all my coaching clients. I have my binge eating support group that we meet every week too. And most like some of these things I do for free. Like this podcast I do for free. This binge eating support group is due for free. I just meet with them every single week and we talk about um, binge eating, how to get through it, how to overcome it, things that we've done. Literally, it's just a support group so that all of us can have somebody to hold each other accountable and to be there for us when we're Mm -hmm. feeling a little bit down. So that... All my coaching clients. What else do I do? I feel like I'm forgetting something. Instagram. (laughs) I forgot Instagram. Yeah, uh, the Instagram. And then on top of it, I have sponsors. So each, Mm -hmm. I have a sponsor for supplements. I have a sponsor for gym gear. I have a sponsor for waist trainer, suit. I I have at least... Five. At least minimum of five. Yeah. Between five and eight sponsors for different things. And all these sponsors require something of us to do every single month. Mm -hmm. So we have to post pictures, Instagram stories, things that they require of us. So that's really what it comes down to when you're a influencer Influencer. is that these sponsors are requiring things of you. It's not just like, oh, yay, you get free stuff. Yay, cool. No, like you have to do something with that stuff that you get. Yeah. And yeah. Most of them have requirements. And if you break contract, there's like very large money money penalties for it. Um, I do some other stuff. So same with the, the TikTok, the Instagram, I don't do my own YouTube, but I am working on that. So coming soon, um, obviously the podcast. So those are all like my social media avenues with all of that. I also have gym gear sponsor, 
um, apparel sponsor, supplement sponsor. I think that's it for me Mm -hmm. for now. (laughs) And then like random brands will reach out about like paid per post and stuff like that. And then my actual mainstream of income is I own an in-home personal training company. And I feel like people forget that I do that. Mm -hmm. Um, But I still have clients and I go to their houses and I train them. And I don't really, I don't take a lot of new clients anymore just because it is a time management thing now of having to balance social media and doing all of those requirements mm-hmm. on top of the job I already have. Um, and I don't know if I said it, but I own that business. So also like scaling that to a place where I can hire other trainers and just manage them is my goal so that I don't have to be the one actually going to the homes eventually. Um, which I did before I've hired people before and I realized I just really like doing it myself. So maybe I won't end up going that path. You never know a million avenues there. Um, and then I also do photography and run a photography business. So just freelance photography. I, I do a lot of fitness content, a lot of couples. I'm trying to branch into like engagement photography cause I just think it's fun and it's really cute. And it's like a wholesome thing to try to capture for people. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for me. Those are my mine. streams of income. Yes. Whenever that happens, you yes. can do mine. Yeah. I'm going to have Zach call me. I know. <laughs> it's going to be, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. I want it I to haven't, be I haven't done um, any like candid yet. Mm-hmm. I've done some like posed where after they're engaged, they'll like do photos together. Mm-hmm. But I want someone to hire me for their actual engagement so I can like hide in a bush <laughs> and just like capture the raw emotions. Like I feel like those are so cute. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. true. And it's hard to like recreate like, <gasps> oh my God, is this, re- <laughs> like, the girl- is this really happening? Right? The typical like girl no. response that, that we have even though we're like oh my god I'm never gonna do that you end up doing that oh I will absolutely <laughs> do that I love that one day one day so that's what we do yeah, yeah. I yeah. feel like people are always like so interested in what we do on like a day-to-day basis mm-hmm. I'm just I'm trying to manage my businesses while also managing my social media yeah yeah it's really fun and it's really rewarding but yeah I think that from an outside looking in it's like how do you explain what we what, do what we what we do someone asked me at the dog park <laughs> literally two days ago or no 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 this was a few weeks ago this actual um occurrence but I was explaining that I was going to um Arizona for the first time mm-hmm. and the reason I was going was my apparel company was flying me out there to take some photos of me I was going for one day and then mm-hmm. I was going to fly back explaining that to someone so hard because yes. I I just went oh yeah I'm going for work and then they went oh, what do you do for work where they're just flying you out for one day? And then I'm like, Uh, I'm like social media, but then like, but that doesn't really make sense to a lot of people, especially this guy was like late thirties, early forties. So like not super in like Gen Z culture Mm -hmm. and understanding it. So it was so hard for me to like, try to like, (laughs) like work around explaining to this guy, well, they're flying me there to take some photos of me. And then flying (laughs) back. And then I'm like, and then they pay me to post their, clothes on my own i don't know (laughs) like it's such a a weird job i work i promise bye (laughs) i usually tell people that all i do is the in-home personal training i don't usually mention social media at all to people maybe one day i i feel like every time that i people ask what i do it changes every time because like i do so many different yeah i'm like i'm a pro bodybuilder no i think saying that we're like i own my own business Yeah. yeah because uh, uh, me and you are there are some people out there that do mm-hmm. just social media where they they just post either they do youtube yeah. full-time or like instagram tiktok mm-hmm. full-time um i feel like me and you have really learned how to like capitalize on that and turn it into more of a business and i think that's like yeah. the smartest thing you can do as an influencer is like realize like hey i'm getting this opportunity right now i need to capitalize it and take it and and either give something back to my followers like us doing this podcast for free or hey I'm gonna give coaching to these clients and Mm -hmm. if they can afford like hiring me that gives you that that elevated level of working with the people that look up to you while like also maintaining a living from it because to be honest the thing about being just a influencer or whatever and you're relying only on your followers on these platforms you don't have any control of what these apps do Literally, you could could lose everything tomorrow. Like, for example, let's talk about Vine. People grew a huge platform on Vine and it just left. No one would have thought that Vine was going to go away. Yeah. And all of these creators that spent so much time building up a platform and none of them got an email list going. None of them actually created a business around it. You are relying on the metaverse to 
take control of your potential clients Mm -hmm. when you need to be taking control of your clients. And when I say take control, I'm not being like, you will do what I say. It's more like you're letting somebody else control your potential income rather than you being the one who's in control of it. So Vine literally got canceled and all these people had to start from fresh and go onto YouTube and then continue to rebuild everything. And so that could possibly happen. Like we don't control Instagram. We don't control TikTok. Look, Facebook's basically gone. So I think if, if social media was taken away from both of us tomorrow, we would still do okay. I'd be fine. I feel like that's like, I don't know. My biggest tip to anyone breaking into the social media realm is like, make sure you diversify. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. Business talk. Email list. <laughs> yes. I actually need Business. to make one. I used to have one for all of my clients. Oh, I do online training too, which I stopped for a while. And I'm trying to like break back into that again. So yeah. That's what we do. That's what we do. That's the, that, that, those are the <laughs> that was things my last question. So that's all I got. Um, just to recap again, like our, I'm sure our branding's going to be changing. And I don't want people to be alarmed or think that like it's anything against Gabby in the slightest. Um, it's fully just like, a change that is weird for all of us, but we're trying to move forward. And like Julia said, we're going to be having guests on hopefully every other week, I think is our goal. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I mean, if there's even other influencers out there in Texas or not, um, I guess you can always leave like a recommendation of people you think we should have on. A hundred percent. I'm sure we're going to run out of people eventually. I know. Yeah, seriously. If there's anybody that you are like dying to hear from and you think would like to be on the pod, please let us know however you want to let us know. I still need to set up a little email, I think, for the for our podcast anyways. But thank you guys for being here. Thank you for for being understanding and all these things that are getting ready to change. And, you know, it's probably, it's. I know it's going to be great no matter what. So thank mm-hmm. you guys for being here with us. We and love as you. always, we love you. <laughs> and you are more powerful than you think. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Know Your Power podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an episode. And if you believe you deserve it, make sure to leave a review and rate the show. Love you. Bye.